it's time to pick up the pace of some of the stories that we've been following for you. Number one, critical moments out of the Gulf of Mexico. The head of the British Petroleum is telling CNN they're being extremely cautious with that dome that they're trying to place over that uh, oil fitting. See it right there behind me. He says that they don't want to make a bad situation much worse. And trust me, it could be much worse, at least five times worse, because if in an effort to try and put the cap over the dome, they accidentally mess up that which is holding the leak where it is right now, this thing could start spurting a lot more oil than it's spurting right now. That's important. I'll take you through it in just a little bit. In the meantime, I want you to listen to this interview, okay? This is Tony Hayward. He's British Petroleum's CEO, as I'm sure many of you know, because he's been on quite a bit. He's talking to our David Mattingly. Pick it up, Raj. So you've got that containment dome on its way down to the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico. How confident are you that this is going to work? Well, the dome this morning is about 200 feet above the leak being lowered very carefully onto the leak. Uh, and then we have the task over the next three to four days of doing the plumbing, taking a pipe up to the, up to the, um, the vessel on the surface to process the oil. This has never been done in 5,000 feet of water. It's a technology first. It works in three to 400 feet of water, but the pressures and temperatures are very different here. So we cannot be confident that it will work. And that is why we continue with other significant interventions. Do you have something ready to go just in case this fails? Well, the, the ready to go is, of course, containing the spill to the maximum extent possible. And then there is a further operation on the blowout preventer, which will probably take two to three weeks to bring into place. But you're drilling for oil a mile underneath the ocean. Was something, why wasn't something ready to go in the event of this kind of a disaster? Well, this has never happened in 25 years in the industry. Yes, I the understand that. The failure of the blowout but preventer but this, not this does seem like there are some risks involved in this. So uh, were you, was this something that you just never, ever thought would happen? It was considered to be an extraordinary low, low probability. And what we've implemented is the spill response plan. Uh, and that is what you're seeing. It's what you're seeing all around us here. It's what you're seeing with an armada of ships on the surface. It's what you're seeing with the dispersant attack. What we've implemented is the spill response plan. Now, clearly, in the light of this incident, the industry will need to step back and determine what more might need to be done. The accident aboard the drilling platform, uh, you've made clear that that was the fault of that company, that drilling company. But it was your oil that was coming out here and is now poisoning the Gulf of Mexico. What kind of oversight did you have on that drilling operation? We had uh, the sort of oversight that an architect has on a, on a building site is the way the industry works. It's the industry structure. So we had oversight of the, de we had the design, they were doing the building. But, you know, I think you know, we can review the issues around that in the future. Our focus today is responding to the incident. We're focused on eliminating the leak, many options being pursued, the first one going into place as we speak. We're focused on containment on the surface, and we're focused on defending the shoreline. And that is what you see going on all around me now. This spill is the size of a large island now. How much bigger is it going to get? That will depend on the, uh, how successful we are in first eliminating the leak and then containing the spill. We and none of us today can say with certainty what that is. What we are doing is throwing the full resources of the Coast Guard, BP, other federal agencies, the local communities at this problem. You've also been applying a lot of dispersant to this spill. Uh, you have stopped applying it underwater for a time. Why did you stop doing that? This is the first time dispersant has been applied at depth on the, on the seabed. It appears to be having a very significant impact. The, the NOAA and EPA scientists wish to establish a baseline such that we can track what is happening and learn for the future. And I would expect that within the next 12 or 18 hours, we will be back to applying dispersant, having established a very thorough and rigorous sampling mechanism. Now, the issue of responsibility, how much is BP prepared to pay for this cleanup and for compensation? We are the responsible party. We are going to clean this up. 
fully and completely and we have said very clearly where there are legitimate claims for business interruption then we will be good for them. Legitimate claims for long term, short term? Legitimate claims. How many years are you prepared to pay fishermen for a bad catch? I said legitimate claims. All those things we'll need to sort out. What we're doing today is focusing on ensuring that people who have been immediately impacted are being dealt with. We have claims offices now open here. They are paying money. Our immediate concern is to ensure that the fishermen here who aren't fishing are either working in the response and being paid for it, or if they're not, then we're providing them with the funds that they would have got from their fishing activity. We know there's a $75 million limit, but how much are you willing to pay beyond that? We have said that it is inevitable that the $75 million limit has no relevance in this case. Are you looking at billions? I think that's all for the future. We are absolutely, as I said, going to take full responsibility for cleaning this up, and we will honor legitimate claims. Who will decide when enough is enough? Will BP decide that they've done enough, or will the public decide? I'm certain uh, that ultimately we will be judged in the course of public opinion by how we've responded to this. The scale of it, the intensity of it, the quality of it, and ultimately the success of the response. Interesting interview, isn't it? But the most uh, immediate concern, obviously, is that dome that's going down over that leak right now. It's going over the blowout preventer. And it's, uh, as I said, going into this interview, it's important because, again, if, if somehow the blowout preventer, which didn't work but was supposed to, is moved or broken off, then it will increase the amount of oil that's coming out of there, and that would be a, a very big problem. So when do they think? You heard him say how carefully they're moving this thing down there with robots under 5,000 feet of uh, water to trip below the surface to try and position it in place. He said that it's going to be in place sometime this afternoon. We're waiting on news of that, obviously, and as soon as we get it, I will pass it on to you.